Innovate. Enable. IBM and CNBC TV18 present Building Cognitive Enterprises. Architect your business for the future. Industry 4.0. The white swan of manufacturing post-COVID. Our topic is an intriguing one. A black swan, as you all know, uh, is a totally unexpected event. COVID-19 is obviously a great example of a black swan. The purpose of this roundtable is to ensure that we get a white swan going in manufacturing in India so that we are better able to prepare for any future black swan event and, of course, raise the digitization level in Indian manufacturing to a new level. So 4.0, as we call it. Joining me are experts representing various segments of industry uh, manufacturing. I have with me Manish Sharma, President and CEO of Panasonic India and South Asia, Deepali Goenka, CEO and John Managing Director, Wells Fun India, Deepak Bagla, the Managing Director, CEO Invest India, Virod Agarwal, Managing Director and CEO of Volvo Asher, the Commercial Vehicles Giant, and Sandeep Patel, Managing Director, IBM India and South Asia. Thank you very much for joining me. Well, uh, Sandeep, let me start with you. You know, manufacturing has faced one of its uh, toughest uh, last five months because of COVID. What was the most common problem people brought to you when they were hit by COVID? And I think um, what, when COVID hit, I think the, the digital transformation that I think had been progressing over, over a period of time, that just suddenly accelerated. And I think everyone was um, trying to figure out ways in which they could stay connected, they could continue doing business, they could continue to stay connected to their employees, and the whole move uh, towards work from home, right, that became a reality. So technology very quickly became the superdar, if you will, that was keeping yeah. things connected, you know, business going and so on. So the biggest problem that people came uh, to us with is making sure that they were ready to move to this new normal of working differently. Because in India in particular, right, we are a very in the office, in person kind of a environment, right? And that is exactly what people struggle to very quickly transition to. So, you know, connectivity, uh, making sure that the right uh, infrastructure was in place and even to a certain extent the right uh, setup was in place to keep people engaged both customers and employees that was um, at the center of it all okay well um, you know for a factory like Panasonic I guess this kind of an option of not running your factory does not exist Manish tell me what was the first thing that you did and how did you solve the problem at Panasonic of running the factory with uh, fewer than usual people. When this pandemic started, the issue was more on the supply side. So I'm talking about the month of January, February and March. And uh, uh, quite rapidly after we went into a lockdown, the challenges shifted more towards the demand side. So restarting factory essentially had two considerations. First one was how do we ensure safety of all the stakeholders? And second is, how do we create sustainability in order to reboot and restart with all the protocols and precautions in place? And I'm extremely happy to share with you that it's been about four months since we restarted our factory operations. Currently, the capacity utilization cutting across various manufacturing facilities. We have about 15 factories uh, in the country. And for consumer durables, uh, the demand is almost back on track. And we have Anchor Electricals happening to be one of our subsidiaries. So again, it is about wires, wiring devices, and the products which go into household, the appliances and the devices, switches, fans, etc. So, so, so over a period of last four to five months, with necessary protocols in place, and as Sandeep also mentioned, I think this is the time when rapid uh, digitalization of both processes into manufacturing facilities and also back-end operations and the field operations. I think that is the necessity of the hour. Mr. Agarwal, for you, there was a demand challenge as well because, you know, all vehicles stopped uh, during lockdown. But while COVID hit us, already the automotive segment was on a high because of the transition to uh, BS6. And then, of course, you had this enforced digitalization because of COVID. 
were you in a sense better prepared in terms of uh, being able to run your factory with minimal people way back around 7 8 years back when we set up the uh, engine plant for volvo group for making euro 6 engines so we had started working on it uh, almost 7 8 years back so we were very well prepared as far as the uh, you know industry is concerned uh, like we have the uh, created the virtual platform where machines and um, uh, people can interact on a on a virtual platform so therefore uh, you know in fact you don't need uh, all the people in the plant because everything is digitalized already and uh, and they get the alerts on their phones or on the um, on their uh, apps and uh, but not and uh, then uh, this covid uh, thing has helped us to accelerate the uh, accelerate it and take it to the next level like for example uh, uh, bs6 already we had done now uh, since we had already done the digitalization in lot of areas so it prompted us that we should now start offering 100% connected vehicles uh, that's why recently we announced that all our vehicles uh, the trucks or buses when we sell from our plant they are all connected and they can be connected uh, either they are on road when they are while they are running they can be connected and now we have done the end to end connectivity right from our uh, design stage till our customer stage that it will encompass the product development it will encompass manufacturing it will encompass sales processes it will encompass dealers dealer workshops then customer and the customer when the drivers are running the trucks uh, they can get the call from our uptime center that uh, this uh, this vehicle is having engine overheating is there or uh, temperature is going up or something is not good in the uh, truck so they can get the uh, you know guidance on real time basis so we it has helped us to take it to the next level Dipali let me come to you you know textiles represents the grandeur of india and yet it's one of the most traditional industries usually we think of uh, textiles as a factory in which there are too many people so how did uh, you know you guys evolve uh, the, you know did covid accelerate the automation in your sector when you talked about the first thing is the health of a people i think right now the important thing that the covid has taught us it has taught us two things one is the health of a people is the prime more than the health of a company so how are you taking care of them and that is where our penta protocols our well heel app all came into play where uh, we started first it started from prevention then to protect and to live with the uh, uh, you know covid and then the whole supply chain uh, with us actually at wellspun since we are vertically integrated we also have a ancillary vendor just a kilometer away so our whole supply chain wasn't disrupted so when your question came in on digitization i think uh, when i talk about everybody as we had a program set for the whole year our whole thing got accelerated and uh, uh, and i think in two months i think what we have achieved is incredible like for for example like you know the whole uh, working from home uh um, ma- monitoring the plan from there to the virtual meetings with our customers virtual mm-hmm. factory walk throughs virtual inspections um and i think uh, everything virtual audits um to uh, to our uh, you know the analytics because analytics was needed to accelerate to look at the demands and how to supply because i think let's not forget like you know when we talk about the supply chain i think we are a part of global supply chain and that needs to be accelerated for the country like india to really ramp up our gdp deepak you tell us about the pull factor for manufacturing 4.0 the, the whole effort now the government's policy is make in india for the world the whole atmanirbhar theme is to break into the global supply chains so you know for that you have to be smarter than the next country you have to be smarter than your competitors in other countries so how do you see the next wave of automation uh, do you see artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning getting adopted uh, in a more widespread fashion the big trend which i am seeing now by this little virus which has come is one is on shoring of your entire supply chain the vulnerability of concentrating your manufacturing facilities in a certain geography just based out of certain financial outcomes has been exposed each yes. and every and we've got all big names with us today they'll tell you they're all looking to see where the market is and today the request which i'm getting are please show us where is the land 
where we can start our operations quickly. Yeah. The second thing which is coming up, this, if you have seen in the past few decades, supply chains have become very long. Also about they got scattered across the geography. The focus now is going to make them shorter. One of the more interesting elements which I've seen is that we are having more and more companies bring their own supply chains here. That means I'm seeing a larger number of MSMEs looking at India, coming in here and coming themselves, not just as a joint venture for what they are looking for in India. And on the digitization, let me just leave one point with all of you. For the first time in human economic history, a brand new company got 100 million new customers in 180 days at a cost of acquisition per client, which was less than one-fifth of the global cost. Or a brand new global company gets 36 million new customers in 13 months, again at a cost of acquisition, which is half. And that is because of that entire digitization effort. IBM and CNBC TV 18 for them and CNBC TV 18 for them. Building cognitive enterprises. Architect your business for the future. Uh, Sandeep, when Indian manufacturers are setting up greenfield plants so as to plug themselves into the global supply chain, do you think they can leapfrog and set up better than world class uh, factories by using uh, new age uh, technologies like uh, uh, artificial intelligence? and machine learning. Uh, do you think that we can use this Make in India theme to launch ourselves into Industry 4.0? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, I mean, clearly, as I, as I indicated, right, the, the whole focus on, um, on connectivity, that clearly has, has, a, has a big role to play. The second piece that I think is enabling manufacturing and 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 in is at large is the availability now of data sets that earlier were not available and, and making those data sets you know connected driving analytics from it and and really driving a greater degree of automation uh, that that enables you to sort of start greenfield operations that are fully automated and and also those that have mechanisms for predictive maintenance, for self-correction, and so on and so forth. And, and this, I think, does a couple of things. One, it allows for these greenfield types of operations to come up quickly with monitoring mechanisms and others that you can do at scale. The second piece that it does is that it, it does open up the avenue because of, you know, the whole promise of Internet of Things, the sen sensor data and others that are available, it opens up the avenue for almost like a data marketplace and services like these that can be capitalized by other providers and the formation of platforms and ecosystems that I think can actually accelerate the, the whole premise of make in India for India and for the world that, that we are trying to accomplish here. Okay, Manish, you know, consumer electronics has been identified by the government as one of the key sectors for uh, Make in India. A, a PLI, a Production Linked Incentive Scheme, has been announced. Do you think you are going to be able to, therefore, set up new factories and set up new factories at a higher level with better automation and much better uh, digital equipment? Yeah, absolutely. I think the answer is in the question itself. If we go back last uh, couple of decades, uh, digital convergence has uh, powered a lot of uh, processes which are sort of making the end product more efficient and cost effective. A very similar situation exists as an opportunity for us to look at greenfield investments wherein we can look at uh, one, uh, technologies which have a very high potential. Uh, I can give some examples here. For example, lithium ion battery, where I believe that uh, there is a huge potential in our country to sort of scale up uh, energy storage solutions cutting across variety of applications and other examples in this can be the sectors which are very consumer specific air conditioners happens to be one of the focus sectors where we are working very closely with the government and today the kind of opportunity which exists solely because of the reason that uh, the penetration ratio and products like those are less than five percent in the country so there is so much to unlock within the uh, potential which exists in our country 
and also look at backward integration to happen in the time to come to ensure that the impacts of the components also. And then with great logistical advantage, especially for products where global supply chain, uh, the necessity of efficiencies on account of logistics costs when we handle such bulky products like air conditioners, etc. I think we have a huge potential to look at exporting towards the West. So I believe that uh, 2020 will look at in the for more reasons than one, and this can possibly be our moment of truth. Okay, Sandeep Patel, you know, in a country like India, a social question will always arise when you are digitalizing or upgrading industry. That is, we cannot afford to uh, keep our labor out of it. And therefore, are there certain aspects of digitization that we should concentrate on, uh, you know, and certain aspects which we should keep out, like maybe too much automation or robotics, which may actually displace jobs. We are starting to see data sets that our computers have never seen before. So when you think about sensor data, weather data, um, you know, data that can be generated through sensors in terms of, you know, machine operations and so on, those data sets are becoming more and more available to us. So the ability to interpret, analyze those data sets and make sense of them and actually drive both automation where appropriate, but also to augment the knowledge of knowledge workers, uh, that becomes um, uh, an area that we should be doubling down on and enhancing because that enables the knowledge workers, if you will, or more skilled workers to make better decisions, to act with a greater degree of precision, and, and so on and so forth. And so this is one of the areas where I think the whole um, push towards skill building and really having people understand um, both in terms of applied skills for artificial intelligence, machine learning, et cetera, but also for people to be better consumers of some of these data sets and analytics and, and have the workers be more tech savvy in terms of how do they drive better decisions with this augmented intelligence, if you will, I think becomes, becomes very, very relevant. Dipadi, uh, you know, textile is very much a touch and feel industry. Now, if you were going to set up the next well-spun factory, the next gen factory, would you be using a lot more of, you know, virtual reality or other new age technologies so as to get closer to the consumer? We already are working towards Industry 4.0. The whole IoT, the whole experience that we are talking about, cobots, robotic in a warehouse. But, uh, you know, when you talked about the manpower and everything, you have to first upskill your people. You will have to also have them, this technology will complement your people. I think that's one thing. So if I look at where I am, I'll just give you a small glimpse of what I am doing today itself in a brown tea project. My, my raw material is cotton. And I have an AI enabled, uh, you know, kind of a technology where the farmer gets an update about the soil, the seed and the weather for the cotton. Okay. And as that, that is one thing that I'm already doing. Okay. After that, the whole traceability of my premium cotton starts at the well track, which is going to be the stepping stone to the blockchain, which textile will already have. Then you come to the whole, whole manufacturing. So manufacturing has to be interconnected on the IoT industry 4.0. So the data is real time. Data is real time so that you can react faster. You have to upscale your people so that they are trained they're trained and be prepared for the industry 4.0. That is important. Then you're talking about the global supply chain and then the front end. Analytics is the key. So one aspect is you have a commodity that is cotton. I mean, and the whole raw material. How, what is the demand that is coming from offshore? What is the consumer thinking? I think to the web scraping. You know, so the real time connected to the, you know, and the years on the ground through technology. And that's pushes the data back into the factories, and then we produce accordingly. Uh, Deepak, what about you at Invest India, when you all are, uh, you know, thinking about policies for an Atmanirbhar India, is labor at the center of the policy? Are you trying to make policies in such a way that more labor is included? Absolutely, Lata. That is the center focus point of virtually every policy which is coming out, both seeing that we get employment as well as we are competitive. 
I must tell you on the skilling, and I pick up on the Pali's point on the human side of it. The skilling bit is very critical, and what has really going to disrupt the entire education and skilling model is that entire digitization effort which has happened in India. The new India, as we walk out of this COVID, is going to be from the small towns and cities of India, and it is going to be bottom up. And this new India is going to be based on an open opportunity and an equal opportunity and access to any opportunity, education, incentive, and everything else which the country offers. So for the first time, you will see all India as one, as which we defined in 1947. This is the new India. Shagarwal, you belong to a segment where India is al already state-of-the-art. I mean, we are already globally competitive when it comes to the automotive sector and automotive ancillaries. Do you think there is still more scope to include, you know, artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, and virtual reality? Uh, you know, is, is there still uh, more progress to be made in setting up a more advanced factory? I think uh, this entire uh, industry 4.0 or digitalization uh, related initiatives, this has taken the productivity to the uh, next level and uh, and the quality and the demerits per vehicle or defects. Uh, I think we are now producing world class uh, products which can uh, compete with any any best of uh, best of the kind like the, our our vehicles compete with Japanese Japanese vehicles. That is possible because now uh, the defects which come out of our line, uh, they are absolutely uh, you know negligible. They are they are almost nil. We are producing with uh, zero level PPMs, and uh, that is possible because the entire thing is integrated digitally, and each machine can talk to the next machine. And and suppose tomorrow there is a defect, the traceability of that defect or genealogy, uh, we can trace it that where it where did it happen. And then it can be analyzed uh, in much more detail, and uh, and then of course we can take a lot of corrective actions as well. Uh, so therefore, the productivity or the uh, then the uh, the supply chain, uh, the supply chain is uh, absolutely gone to the uh, next level. This has been the most enriching conversation, uh, gentlemen and lady. Thank you very much. It looks like uh, Indian manufacturing is raring to go and reach. Industry 4.0 and take with them the farmer, the consumer, the startup, and make global markets ours uh, very soon. Thank you very much for joining me in this conversation. IBM and CNBC TV 18 present Building Cognitive Enterprises Architect Your Business for the Future.